Snyder on the inside and Sauter on the outside. Restarting, going to bring us to 33 to go. And now Moffitt taking a look on the inside. Holding our breath here, but it looks like Sauter's going to clear. Off turn two. And try to set sail like he was early on, but Snyder's not having it. He's right there. Moffitt getting underneath Benjamin, going to secure that third spot, hope so. But how about Kyle Benjamin hanging in there? Has not had tires since, what, lap 39? 39. He tried to pull it to the inside there and put on a good line on entry, but he is definitely doing an exceptional job on the 17 truck, trying to help hold on with those way old tires. I mean, it's super up, but Moffitt doing his deal, just keeps plugging away as a veteran. Grabbing those spots when he can, when other people make mistakes. Yeah, it's been a great run for that 16 of Moffat. They haven't had back-to-back -back top 10 finishes since March. In fact, when they were here uh, in March, and it just uh, you wonder about that inconsistency and what that might cost them in the championship chase. But they have been spot on today. So impressive. Look at Benjamin holding them off up there, Phil. He's going to try to come back down to the inside and hold them off still. Chain reaction, everybody starts piling up. 16, 41, 8. Everybody's going to start getting a little bit more impatient as these laps click off. I think Benjamin in the spring had the oldest tires among the guys battling for the win, and he ended up second in that race. So he knows how to manage these older tires. He's doing a great job. I mean, I, I'm hoping I'm not learning any bad habits for my race tomorrow. I'd, I'd take fresh <laughs> tires over old tires anytime. I want to hear that paper flapping on those sticker <laughs> tires. Pretty impressive for just his second start in the truck series as you see Matt Crafton now in that 88 trying to make his way toward the top 10. And how about Stuart Friesen by battling back after that flat tire and spin, racing just outside the top 10. Yeah, he's made his way back on the lead lap and got the free pass. With Gilland, he came in and got tires on that pit stop. I don't think Crafton did. So Crafton's definitely trying to hang on here. He's falling back to 13th with those older tires. Not necessarily in a good spot. No. Getting into points like he needs to. Johnny Sauter continues to lead while you watch the view of Matt Crafton. A little contact with Matt or with uh, Todd Gilliland. They're in the 13th and 12th positions. Love the visor cam though. It puts you right in the battle. And the key thing about any time you're at a short track is not staring at that truck in front of you. You have to absorb and look ahead and look at Friesen. Look at Gregson. Look beyond all the way up to that white truck and then just grab those other trucks in front of you in your peripheral vision. He, he really hardly even sees that truck in front of him. Isn't that right, Kurt? I mean, it's it's there, but he's not concentrating at all on that truck. You're concentrating on your four tires and looking ahead. And if you do catch yourself looking at that guy's tailgate, then you're all wrong and you're out of sequence. Moffat making another run at Benjamin and secures that spot this time. So Brett Moffat into the third position. And now... Ben Rhodes, right to the back bumper of that 17. Remember, Ben Rhodes, only two tires on his last stop, but they're, they're a lot newer than the 17 of Benjamin's. Looks like Ben's going to get to the inside. He Ooh. tried. He was just touching him. He was kind of like moving him out of the way, like one polite push of the hand. Just push of the nose of the truck. Just a suggestion. You should move over. <laughs> I'm coming through. And he does. Makes the pass clean. Benjamin slips back to fifth. Well, this will be a time now for Benjamin just to settle back in and uh, run some laps, but looks like we got John Hunter Nemechek on pit road. Is he under power? It's it awfully slow. Like it. it looks like he's slower than pit road speed. Turn in right there. Taking it into the garage yeah. Tough John break. Hunter Nemechek. That left front tire held. We speculated that it may not, but <laughs> some other sort of an issue for John Hunter Nemechek. Yeah, I hate that. That's a great sponsor to have on that truck. And, yeah, we thought the left front tire would go first, but something else happened there. Johnny Sauter by more than a second and a half out front of Myatt Snyder. Snyder coming off a runner-up finish at Talladega, but he has got company. Brett Moffitt. How about the move that Moffitt has made today? He finished 14th in Stage 1 ninth in stage two and now he's heating up Myatt Snyder for that second spot. Remember he finished third here in the spring so he knows how to get around this racetrack. Camping World 20 to go here at Martinsville and those 20 will go by quickly. Doesn't take long to get around this half mile. I sure will. Running 21 second lap times. Moffitt I was just gonna tell you hey buddy you don't have a mark on your truck. And he's using the old chrome horn to move Snyder out of the way.
You can tell Moffitt has run a really smart race, and he hasn't gained many stage points yet today, so he's definitely trying to cash in and get up to second spot. And that would also give him an opportunity on the restart to be on the front row. He does get to us. I think we'd be smart here, though. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather finish third than be wrecked. Technically, if you're Snyder, you would want him to go bye-bye. That way you get back to third and you line up on the inside on, on a restart. restart. Yes, and go back to that spot that he was in when he tried to bomb, dive bomb Sauter. That was crew chief Rich Lushes and Rick Griffin, the spotter, talking about it. Some big picture racing there and understanding the significance of just getting a good, strong finish today. And for a rookie driver like Mayan Snyder, that is important. Yeah, and keep piling him up, too. We mentioned he had a, a runner-up finish at Talladega for his career best. Let's, let's put another top three with that. He's definitely getting uh, you know, his feet underneath him and finding you know, different speed at different tracks and finding the rhythm. You know, if you do it at a big track, that's one thing. Do it at a short track, that's another. And that's when you're starting to move forward and get in your, your comfort level. Noah Gregson inside of Timothy Peters, and that's going to be for eight. Gregson definitely leads this spot. You know, he's had a quiet day. Uh, he wants to gain those stage points, but here, yeah, this is towards the finish. you got to pour it all in there right now. There's no more holding back. Yeah, if we go another 15 laps and this camera survives, you're going to owe us a dollar, too, Kurt. I'll pay up the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to just nudge it off right there. It's like he was listening. Moffitt's been in the back of Snyder a couple times here. Oh, he's going he's gonna to have a spot now. Yeah, they got to believe he's, the patience is running thin, and they're telling him, go ahead and give that spot up, and Moffitt will take the position from Myatt Snyder. He's going to come back low into three to kind of throw the block at Rhodes. He's going to have a bad angle. Rhodes is just going to start to move him out of the way. Is that back bumper technical inspection height anymore? <laughs> Look at that thing. It's I've been moved. I think you can drive under that back bumper right now. <laughs> but he's running third. Nobody cares. Ben Rhodes in fourth. Had such a great run here in the spring. Having another one backing it up here today as Snyder, or as uh, Crafton continues to try to work on the four of Gilliland. Crafton's got to gain these spots. He is on the outside looking in. Oh, oh, and a little slip up there. Should be able to get to the inside and get a clean drive off. And you should be able to outbreak him going into three. Got Enfinger right behind him. Remember, fresh tires on that 98 of Enfinger. Oh, Crafton's working hard. He is loose on entry there, especially with Enfinger on, on his rear tailgate. That got him loose getting in. That was tough. But Crafton has to fight. He's got to fight. He's minus 10 right now. And the way his truck, the way that him and his crew chief, Junior Joiner, all year long, uh, they just haven't quite had that raw speed. He's got to fight for these spots. Ten to go here at Martinsville. The four of Todd Gillen started on pole today, but right now finds himself 12th. Johnny Sauter out front. Remember how good the KBM trucks were in qualifying. One, two, three. Maybe as it got cloudy in this racetrack change, maybe that, that didn't fit with their setup because right now the highest running KBM truck is Harrison Burton in seventh, Gregson in eighth, and you have Todd Gillen back in 12th. The tracks changed so much from the green racetrack that it was this morning. And I say green, that means there's no rubber on it. It's fresh and it grabs the tires. Now that it's rubbered in and you see all this dark patches everywhere, it's slicker. It's harder to get a hold of and your setup is completely different. I wish right now we could go run Monster Energy Cup Series happy hour after the truck race because then it would resemble more of what we're going to race tomorrow for 500 laps than what your previous practice was. And so that's why some of the KBM trucks qualify good and then the setup just seems to fall off. But I'll tell you what, solder all day long. Mm -hmm. Just clicking off laps. You know, Moffitt has worked his way from qualifying poorly up into second. So sometimes you got to just play the tortoise approach and work okay. him and get him at the end. Johnny Sauter getting ready to come to the line. There'll be six to go as we take a look at our four track facts. Martinsville, first one of two tracks where the series has competed in all 24 seasons and be going to Phoenix and ISM Raceway in a couple of weeks. It'll be a great one out there. Start finish line is going to be over in what used to be turn two, right? If there's going to be back? a lot of, con will you be confused by that? <laughs> oh, for sure. I'm in the over 40 club. I don't know which corner is going to be which. 
Five to go. Johnny Sauter with over a three-second lead right now is saying, please, everyone, be calm. No caution flags here. Yeah, he definitely wants this to go green to the end. And then Benjamin running top five. He wants to hang on to that top five spot. It's, uh, it's been an interesting race on how the strategies unfolded. And everybody survived on those restarts for the most part, other than Effinger, uh, with the way that he got turned around. See the points there in the uh, bottom left with Johnny Sauter came in as the leader and certainly doing nothing to uh, harm his chances at a championship with his run here today. Gregson, Moffitt, Infinger, with Justin Haley and Matt Crafton on the outside. They were both on the outside looking in when this race started, and things have changed a couple of different times, but there they find themselves again sitting fifth and sixth. Uh, solid run, though, for Justin Haley. Qualified outside the top ten. Right now running in the sixth spot. If he can maintain that with Harrison Burton, the 51 right in his tailgate, I think he'll be happy with that. Yeah, gold star for him today and Moffitt as well. But I'll tell you, it's been a Johnny Sauter kind of day. Final couple of laps. Johnny Sauter into turn three. He'll take the white flag this time. Johnny Sauter, half mile to go for Sauter. Five wins this season for Johnny Sauter, and he's about to add to the total. And with this win, he will secure his spot in the championship four. Johnny Sauter will get his fourth win at Martinsville. No one has won more in the truck than Johnny Sauter. Fantastic job from that team today. Way to go. Automatic berth to the Homestead round. Battle for the championship. There's Josh Good here, crew chief. Great job, buddy. Good job, guys. Great job. There have been others to win three races here at Martinsville in the truck. Nobody has ever won four until today. Johnny Sauter wins for the fourth time. They get that grandfather clock. They won in every room at Johnny Sauter's house. <laughs> <laughs> He's all fired up. Burn it down, Johnny. Probably don't need that engine anymore, right? Uh-uh. Huge win for Sauter to secure his spot in the final four and a chance at the championship at Homestead. Hermie? Well, Joe, sixth win on the season, and you guys are going to Homestead to race for another championship. What a dominating performance. Did you have any idea before the race started you'd had this kind of a truck? Well, yeah, we always run good here. You know, I love this place. Johnny loves us. We're a bunch of short track racers, but, you know, uh, NASCAR threw us for a little loop here with no practice, so we just put our old setup in it and uh, tweaked on it a little bit, and that shows how good this team is and how good Johnny is here. That's Joe Shear, his team, and Johnny Sauter is going to victory lane at Martins. Yeah, it says they're short track guys, and they are indeed. They won two of the five short track races this season, winning at Bristol and then backing it up with the win here today at Martinsville. Johnny Sauter, a dominating performance, led 149 laps, led stage one, stage two, and won the race.